Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup. We're going to cover the games from the LCK, LPL, and LEC today, and then preview tomorrow's games in the LPL and LEC, respectively. I'm 78 and 40 on this board. I went 8 and 2 today, so we had a good day trying to get these numbers back up um, in my predictions. Um, so, LCK, KT, and Bro, uh, a little bit of some nonsense going on with this one. Uh, LCK. Drop the ball. Um, apparently, the rules are that you're supposed to inform that, you know, somebody gets side selection. It's double round robin. So, both teams get this opportunity to choose which side they want game one to be on. And um, you're supposed to inform the other team three days ahead of time. And, I mean, Riot is supposed to inform what the, you know, the opposition, what team A's decision was, in this case, KT. And, um, they told Bro the wrong side. So Bro prepared, dra I mean, game one's draft, and um, it wasn't the case. 40 minutes before the game, they find out that Riot was wrong, that KT wanted the opposite side. Um, and so that's a problem, obviously. Um, I don't think it's malicious. I think it's completely accidental. Um, Riot not handling it in the best way possible right away. Uh, of course, they didn't expect to have this mistake until when it happened as well um as far as i'm concerned i think the simplest fix is to just tell the teams that next round robin when these two teams play uh when bro get to pick the side they don't have to tell kt what side it is until they show up uh to, to the stage um, i think that's the most fair way to handle it somebody might say well you know that means that they have three days heads up to prepare two drafts for either side this and that and bro was so sure when game two you get to pick the opposite side if you lose game one you get to choose so you should have a draft prepared for the opposite side regardless because you only have like 15 minutes in between games and teams literally prepare drafts for hours during the week so if you need hours to prepare drafts you're not going to get a draft done in 20 minutes anyway so you should have had game you should have red side already done blue and red side but regardless i think that's the simplest way to fix it you just allow bro um the opportunity to go in with kt blind next time bro did not stand a chance though that's another thing kt blew him out game two is 23 minutes um keen 11 2 8 was mvp 32 percent of damage his jace was absolutely disgusting in the monumental team fight to end game one his camille was also very impactful Aiming 8013 did not die, obviously, and Karas 254, 30% damage for Bro. KT just dominated him. And some people might say maybe Bro didn't have it in him after, you know, that curveball. I think that um, solo Q is a hell of a lot more tilting at times than something like that, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Bro are contesting the result. I think that really all of the LCK should do is say, hey, next time we're flipping the script and, uh, KT goes in blind. I don't think you should replay this series. It wasn't close. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I, I won't lie. I do not really enjoy watching Bro play. So if I knew that I was going to watch Bro play one more time, one way or another, an extra time, I'm going to be against that idea. Full disclosure. Um, so KT went 2 0. Damn it, I knocked the board. Okay, we're good. We're still there. KDF and D plus D plus win in three games, two to one. Uh, Def 13 one seven, 27 percent of damage. Showmaker 11 to 11 was MVP. Taeyun 459, 30 percent of damage. Um, Freaks were able to take a game. It was a, a low scoring game. Young J I thought was very good on the Sejuani in that one, but um, outside of that, obviously, uh, I thought Showmaker, despite not dealing a lot of damage and dying one more time than Def, not having as many kills, all these things that might dissuade somebody from picking him i thought his jace did work in game one when it needed to and then in game three his akali was all over the damn place and that was a, a big thing that really got them ahead he helped uh the side lanes helped the bot lane get ahead um i thought he played one of his better series thus far freaks obviously do have something to hang their hat on though getting a win is important i said that yesterday with t1 and nongshim uh, these lower teams with with young players, they need those boosts of confidence. Um, you see Tayun's mentioned here, not Bulldog. Bulldog played Swain in Game 3, and I think Swain is absolutely turbo trash. I do not like that champion right now. Um, I don't know why it was picked. Um, 
in June struggled. I think he died seven, uh, maybe died even more than seven, maybe nine times in these three games. So uh, hopefully they don't pull June out for Moham right away, give June a few series. Um, but nevertheless, D-plus get by KDF pretty easily. LPL, Ninja in pajamas in top, top fifth in the power rankings. They win 2-1. to one. Rookie, 14-6-12, 30% of damage. He had a Silas game that I think was really good, if I recall. Mark, 2-6-23 at support. Photic, once again, positive KDA, 9-8-18, 25% of damage, as we have a very even spread of damage on Nip in um, this one. Nip did split the series up. Game 1, Dream played. Then Game 2, Pout played. And Pout actually played very well. Invincible absolutely crushed. He had 10 kills on the Jacks. But Pout, I thought, did well. And then in Game 3, he also was solid, given the fact that he's making his LPL debut against one of the best mid laners of all time. Um, and, and, I mean, I thought he held his own. I mean, the jungle roll was a little bit of a gap. Um, and Invincible was good in their win, but I wouldn't say it was good over the entire series, for sure. Uh, King Tian got Kaysante in a game, and he probably... Like, I'm not going to say Fudge is the best Kaysante because he's Western, and I don't think that anybody in the West has the best champion of anything. Um, but outside of Fudge playing well on it consistently, King Tian has shown the ability to play Kaysante at a very high level. Um, so that was a thing. Uh, but I thought Rookie was MVP. I thought he played exceptionally. Rare Adam and LNG. Rare Adam 25th. LNG 17th. LNG win with ease 2-0. Scout absolutely smokes. Rare Adam, 22 and 18. That's 20 kills, 2 deaths, 18 assists, 36% of damage. LP and bot lane also did very well, 12, 3, 20. Asum, 5, 10, 11, 26% of damage. Once again, another team that spread the damage out a lot. Um, that was just pure domination by LNG. Um, you know, top side was pretty close, um, but mid and, and mid and uh, 80 carry, the bot lane situation. LNG definitely took it to Rare Adam, as I probably shouldn't have put Rare Adam 25th, but they were 2-0 in the LPL, and when you're, you know, undefeated in one of those regions, it's hard to kind of ignore it, um, even though they did play some pretty bad teams to start the split, um, but, you know, Strive definitely left a lot to be desired, uh, Scout gapped him, uh, this is just kind of something we expected, uh, I think I had LNG 2-0 in this one going in, so I was not overly shocked by the result. Um, RNG and EDG, this did shock me. I don't have, I didn't write power rankings down, but RNG were 7th, EDG 14th. EDG went 2-0. Fofo was MVP. I thought his Jace and Akali, similar to Damwon's strategy, I thought his two games were very, very good. Um, Jace, the Jace game, he had the majority of the kills for sure, which shouldn't be why you get MVP, but I thought he was doing his job and doing it at a high level. And really, the mid lane is where this game was gapped. Tangwon playing both games. Um, EDG went 2-0, leave 15-2-9, 27% of damage. Ali would not die in top lane, going 3-0-14. Gala, 4-8-6, 29% of damage for RNG. So Ming plays, right? And I thought Mako actually played kind of sus on the Ash game, uh, died quite a bit. He hit some arrows, but just kept mispositioning. Um, but I thought Ming was fine. First game back with the team, obviously hasn't been around them for even a week, and he's already playing. Um, New coach, that's a problem. Uh, but Tangwon playing, that's 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 the big problem. Uh, Tangwon got gapped, and he is, and I've been saying it all along. He is not LPL level anymore. I thought, you know, going into the year that he could like, like if he had another good split, he could probably push for a spot next year on a team. But in this one, in this split, he is not ready. And I mean, there are rumors being spread that Angel is got screwed that he's thought he was going to be a starter but the sub and this and that i just think it's bad coaching i looked at um hero hero hasn't coached it's not hero i keep saying hero it's another coach sin sin has not coached since 2020 africa it's been a while since they've led the helm at least according to leaguepedia as a as a um person that's getting you know credited with the results of a split um and they've only had really one good run at msi over their entire career Otherwise, they have not been very good. They have not had international experiences. Um, so, you know, they fire Tabe, and Ming being brought in as they fire Tabe makes me think that they had to make that move. But 
they had a couple coaches on the coaching staff. So was this the move? Should they want the other guy? Maybe. Um, or they're just trying to feel it out. They're trying to feel out maybe the way this coach wants them to play the game. Uh, there's there's a lot of things going on with this, but R and G are going to follow my power rankings until Angel's playing regularly. I think this is a big big problem. Um, so, I mean, not a lot really to say nicely. I mean, EDG beat the crap out of them, and R and G are kind of just shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, LEC. So SK and XL. XL needed to win. They would lose. They played a crazy draft with Yasuo Sanabat. Um, SK, like I said, win. Our, we're 15th in the power ranking. Exekick, 606. 32% of damage on Zeri. Surtis, 435 on an Akali, I think. And Bethio, 122. 40% of damage on a Victor. Um, Excel's draft was pretty bad. But the way I kind of reconciled it at the time is Excel have not won playing meta at all. That, I think, you look at their record, it was 1 and 6 going into it. So to think that they could play meta and win after not playing meta and winning the last seven games, I think is a little foolish. Um, so throwing random champions at the wall is not the best play, but it is different than what you're doing. So um, that's the thing. Excel stuck in it for a while until the mid game when they kind of threw it barren. Um, but it was close until it wasn't as Excel kind of, I mean, they're out. I think, I think they're out now. <sighs> yeah. They're out, so super team down. Uh, RNG and EDG. Oh, that's Vitality and BDS. Vitality 11th, BDS 19th. Vitality win a game. They bow. The team did not deserve to win. Photon is the only winner, and really, is he a winner? It's hard to say, but Photon literally 1v9 the hell out of this game. Perk, 6511, 39% of damage. Perks played well. He definitely entered at times. He played a hell of a lot better than he did yesterday, and he played a hell of a lot better than Bo. Bo absolutely turbo into this game. He got caught out so many times. Um, I think he died like 10 times, 11 times by the end of the game. Um, hopefully he gets as, I mean, I don't want a rookie to get as much heat as a veteran, but we look at how much heat Perks got for how badly he played Saturday. You'd hope that... Um, People aren't going to show biases. Um, Photon, 10, 2, and 4. Uh, on a Gwen, Photon carried this game. Absolutely hard carried. Crowny, 8, 2, 7, 33% of damage for BDS as they lose, as the 80 carry looks good once again. Um, just lot, just threw. They just hard threw this game. They had the game in the bag, and they threw it over and over and over again through the mid and late game. And It was because of Photon. Photon brought this game back. There were moments where Sheo got a little over-aggressive. Sheo played a fabulous game of League of Legends on Wukong. He outplayed the hell out of Bo. I think that is undeniable. Um, and it's noteworthy, I think. It's only one game, but it's something to note. Um, and the thing is, like, it's just rookies making mistakes. A young team. I've said this before, actually. I said it when they played XL and they, and they lost. This is a team that is, is so young, it doesn't know how to win. The process of going through to win at the LEC level is tough for them. You know, Adam, obviously with Fnatic, there are a lot of veterans on that team. Excuse me. Um, Crowney. Crowney's been around. But, like, LeBron's been around, but also he's been on a lot of losing teams. Nuke has only known really losing at the LEC level, and Sheo's a rookie. So, like, they're trying to figure out how they can go about winning a game as a team. And sometimes, you know, they end. So, that happened. But they're moving on to the best of series, so it's kind of is what it is. Heretics and Mad Lions. Mad Lions 5-2, and two, Heretics 4-3. and three. Uh, Karzi 7-2-7 seven, seven in the win, 33% of damage on Avaris. Niski 8-5-6 on a Silas was MVP. He had a Penta. Pentas don't happen every day. I say it every time because Pentas tend to not happen every day. Um, so Niski gets his flowers. He got a Penta. Actually protecting the base, if I recall correctly. So that's actually even a bigger deal. Um, Mursa, 7-5-6, 29% of damage. You think to yourself, Mursa, 7-5-6? That's like a KDA stat line. He's got... Leads, he led the team in damage on a Heimer support. 
Um, early game, super aggressive, getting caught out over and over again, trading kills. I think he was 3-2-2 two, and two at one point. Like, he was trying his damnedest to carry this game for them. Um, Evie didn't get Kaysante. Went 1-4-4 four, and four on a Renekton. I think that's notable. Um, but Mad Lions played well. Chasey played well. Mad Lions played well in general. Um, as I said, and I keep saying, if you play Mad Lions and Koi and you do not bring your A game, you will lose. Um, and Koi... Not quite as good as Mad Lions, but I think this really is holding true for Mad Lions this year. Um, Fnatic and Astralis, a must-win game. This was the game of the day. They thought it was, you know, I know on the caster desk, you know, uh, uh, somebody said, uh, Betty, I think, said, you know, to, to Medi, you know, you probably shouldn't say that or that's not, you know, it's, but it's true. It was the game of the day. This is make or break. It was make or break. Like this one here and Astralis won. Finn won, like, Finn hard carried again on a NAR, super impactful in team fights. 307, 32% of damage. Kabe on a Lucian, 708. Humanoid, 131, 44% of damage on Azir. And I thought Humanoid had a chance to really carry this one. I did, um, but it didn't happen. Um, Reckless, one of the games where he really struggled, went 030. The bot lane got gapped. Um, just, it, it did not work. It did not work. Um, Simply, really, like, saying it like that, like, Exile and Fnatic, it didn't work. These two veteran rosters just didn't. And, um, it's, it's a shocker. It's, it's a shocker, to say the very least. Um, yeah, I mean, tomorrow Fnatic needs some help, and they need to do some work on their own to be able to get in. Obviously, now one game back of Astralis and Koi. Uh, they need, uh, the, well, the, the thing is, Fnatic... If Fnatic wins tomorrow, the loser of Koi Astralis has to play Fnatic. I think that's the deal. So um, we'll see how that goes for eighth place. G2 and Koi. Uh, G2 win. Mickey was MVP. Broken Blade, 506, 30% of damage in top lane. Yike, 717 on a Elise. Yike showing that he can play other champions, more facilitator oriented champions. It's a big deal. That's a big, big, big deal. As these rookie junglers are really looking fabulous. I'm, I'm I actually feel bad for one one three because one one three's had some good games today. He played a very good Trundle game, and I think a lot of people are going to kind of forget that he existed. I'm going to give him a lot of heat. But going into the year, he into the split, he was the guy that we were like, he doesn't belong, and I still hold true to he probably isn't. He was not ready. But he has done well. He did well on Trundle today. I think, you know, I overlooked that. I think people should give him a little bit of respect for that. Um, but Yike, absolutely crushing it on Elise. Uh, Sisgenda, 342, 30% of damage for Koi. Trying to carry in top lane on a gangplank. Kit didn't work. Larson had a little early lead against Caps, but Caps came back. Um, but Mickey was MVP because Mickey, I watching that bot lane in the laning phase, early laning phase especially, um, his Leona was on point. He really made a lot of things happen. He got Han Sama ahead, and they took that, and it allowed them to win team fights in, in a big way. And um, that's why, honestly, I thought Mickey was MVP before the the interview after the, 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 the game. And even Hans had said Mickey was probably the MVP um, at first, then said BB and, and whatever. But, um, like, Mickey, I thought on the Leona was, was very, very good. Um, obviously, a champion that we've seen struggle a lot this year because of the meta being the way it is. But Mickey made it work. Um, as G2 played a very clean game and kind of put Koi in the grave for this, uh, you know, on, on dire straits going into tomorrow. So, that's it for the recap for today. Now, on to the sneak peek for tomorrow. Okay, so for tomorrow, we got two LPL game series. Weibo and FPX, I'm going to say games, but their series. Weibo, fourth in the power rankings, one and one. FPX, one and two. Weibo lost to BLG, FPX beat Ultra Prime. Week nine, day six of summer. Weibo would beat this team 2-0. Only three players from that series start tomorrow. The Shy for Weibo, and then Care and LWX for FPX. The Shy went 8-4-10. The Shy versus Jala, who is the matchup. Um, that Discord, and I agree, is the highlighted one. Um, Summit played last year in the place of Jalahu. Uh, Jalahu was benched at the time, so we'll see how this one looks. Um, this, this, I think this series could be closer. Um, originally, before I wrote this all down, I thought it was anyone's legend. I was saying to myself, wow. Um, 
you know, I don't think Weibo would throw against anyone's legend. I really don't think that that's possible. That's how bad anyone's legend is. But against FPX, this might be a series. Um, mid lane, I think, ja you know, Weibo's got to work out some things right now. And I said this yesterday when we were talking about their series against BLG. They are a team that only played one series before yesterday. We have to give them a little bit of time. I think it's ridiculous not to. Um, and then some people think, oh, wow, we got to give everybody some time. This is like... It's been like two. Oh, it's been one series. They have to work. They have to work on things. Um, and I think FPX is a good test for them. Not a good team, really, but you know, a team that you probably can't sleep on. Anyone's legend in JDG AL 0 and 4. JDG 2 and 0, third in the power rankings. AL lost to LGD in the battle. Well, one would say the toilet bowl. Um, JDG bit, beat Nip. Week 9, Day 7, JDG would win 2-0. Six out of the ten players from that series start tomorrow. The Junglers both actually had a positive KDA. Kanavi, 5-2-18. Zhao Hao, 6-5-4. Zhao Hao played a Pantheon in that one. Pins and Knight is the matchup highlighted by the Discord. Honestly, I... I don't know. Um... I really, I don't know. Uh, pins and, I mean, will pins perform? Get pins off of Akali. I don't want him on Akali. I don't want him on Akali. Put him on something else. Um, I just want to see how he does. It's hard to really judge anyone's legend right now. Anyone's legend is a tire fire. Um, JDG, this is a big boost for the player pool, folks, because everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have JDG players, um, including myself. Um, do I... Do I? 369, no. Summit, Bow, Chovy, Ruler. No, I don't have Ruler. I have Care. I don't remember who I have in my player pool, guys. Sorry. On the Discord if you're in there. Um, LEC, BDS, and Heretics. BDS, 19th, 4 and 4. Heretics, 4 and 4. BDS lost to Vitality today. Heretics lost to Mad. Week 8, Day 1. Then Misfits. Now Heretics would win. Only two of the ten players who started in that game start tomorrow. Nuke for BDS. Mursa for Heretics. Mursa went 0-1-19 on a Braum. Adam versus Eevee is the matchup highlighted. Maybe we get some crazy picks since both these teams are locked in. Give us something crazy. I want to see Eevee Mordekaiser. Urgot. Lilia is going to be buffed on the next patch. Eevee is a guy that has played Lily in the past in top lane. That's something to note. I think that is something we have to keep in mind going into uh, the, the winter group stage. Um, Adam, obviously Darius and Olaf. Uh, I hope we see something fun. Uh, Koi and Astralis, both three and five. Like I said, this is the matchup of the day. Um, well, this one's just for seeding purposes, like winner gets to choose a side, but uh, choose uh, an opponent. But honestly, we know what's bigger is this one. The loser, if Fnatic wins, the loser of this one has to play Fnatic in a tiebreaker. That's a big deal. That's going to matter a lot. It matters a hell of a lot more than who wins this one. Um, so, Koi and Astralis. Koi lost to G2. Astralis beat Fnatic week 6, day 2. Astralis won last year. Seven of the ten starters in that game start tomorrow. The only ones that are swapped are top jungle for Astralis and top for Koi. Kabe 617, Comp 223. So both bot lanes did solid in that one, given the circumstances. And um, that's the matchup highlighted. Obviously, Kabe and Yonghoon playing extremely well today against Fnatic and have played pretty solid throughout the split, except yesterday against SK. Um, that one was very, very bad. Um, Comp and Trimby, however, have been all over the place. Uh, yesterday they played well, but they more often than not have been pretty disappointing this split after a great playoffs last year. But we do have to keep in mind, sometimes that happens. You know, that's that's the nature of being good on a patch. And also, as likely is, they just don't match this patch. They cannot do it. It's just not working for them. Um, I think people kind of putting too much on one patch. That's kind of the downfall of this format, in my opinion. Um but that's kind of the deal there. SK and Fnatic, like I said, Fnatic need this game. They're 2-6. and six. SK 4-4, four and four, 15th. In the power rankings, they beat Excel today. Uh, Fnatic lost to Astralis week 7, day 1. Fnatic won last summer. 4 out of 10 starters from that game start tomorrow. The two mid laners, Humanoid 306, Sirtus 140. 
Obviously, bot lane being highlighted again. Exekick and Doss, Reckless and Rux. Reckless needs to step up in this one. This is the moment for Reckless where he needs to show up. Um, all split long. He's kind of bided his time. Being a KDA player, his, his stats look good, but he is not winning games. He needs to win the game. This is where the Reckless of old needs to come out and actually perform at a high level. Um, SK, Exekick has been playing absolutely fantastic. I think that, honestly... Honestly, it's really um, like I don't. I hope they're not doing rookie of the split like, and then like after only one round robin, I would like like rookie of the year in a format like this. I don't think that you should be doing it this way. Um, shouldn't be splitting it in thirds. The rookie of the year MVP and and all that jazz. Um, personally, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, I don't think I'm going to be making a video winter MVP and this and that. I don't. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, it's not enough games for me to really, really want to judge that. Um, but rookie of the year purposes, I think Exekick is rookie of the split. I think that he, given the fact that SK is where they are and, um, Vitality has the players they have, um, Photon and Bo like are doing very, very well together. Um, Perk's obviously doing very well together. We'll get into that. But, um, Exekick, the bot lane's kind of doing it all for SK in my opinion, Outside of Markoon's Elise, so that's kind of the deal there. Mad Lions and G2, both in the top 25. Mad 23rd, G2 16th, both 6 and 2 for first place in um, the deal here. Um, Heretics lost to Mad, so Mad just beat TH. G2 beat Koi. Week 8, day 1. G2 would win in summer. 4 out of 10 starters start tomorrow. Cap 619, Niski 427. Uh, Highlighted matchup is the Jungle Roll, El Yoya, and Yike. Some people would consider them in the top three. I would say so. Um, you know, they are very, very good junglers. So the Jungle Roll, obviously, whoever can get more done is going to win. Um, I think you can even push this off to the mid lane. Niski, obviously, with a pen today. Caps struggling a bit, but played very well yesterday. That matchup's probably going to be interesting. Um, top lane should be close. And flip a coin for Mad Lions, bot lane. Lastly, Vitality and SK. Uh, this game, Vitality, I mean, want to win. I don't know if they have to play a tiebreaker against the winner of this one for first seed or not. Um, but XL are out, so they have nothing to play for but pride and a job. Um, the deal with XL is they sold their ERL spot. They do not officially have an ERL team, which means I don't know how they fix that internally. Um, they have to buy out players and swap players out. Um BDS, uh, so Vitality beat BDS, XL lost to SK. Last time they played was the tiebreaker in summer last year where XL slammed the door on Vitality's playoff hopes. Two out of ten players that start in that game start tomorrow. Patrick for XL went 5-0-3, and Perks was the other one, but Photon and Odo Omne is a matchup to watch as Photon's coming off of the best game probably of his career. Um, Photon... I mean, we said it earlier in the video. Photon absolutely carried. He's the only one that deserves a win. And frankly, did he win with how much he had to carry? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He won. Rest of the team didn't. Um, but that game, I mean, there's not really much to say. That game matters. Does not matter at all. Does not matter at all. There's nothing going on in that one. And this one kind of doesn't matter either. So um, that's kind of the deal tomorrow. Um, so... Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube member. $3 a month supports me. $10 a month you get my predictions um, where I, you know, say who I think is going to win the game. I hit stop recording and I hit start recording again. Once I'm done talking to you right this second and I do my predictions. So that's the deal there. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks for watching.